there's a reason I've always wanted to talk to Lisa Sthalikar. I always followed her on the score sheets. I always knew how many she was scoring. Because the combination of a Maharashtra name and a hard Australian accent just made it even more intriguing. <laughs> and then I got to know a little bit of her story and she just sort of rose in my eyes and it's, it's wonderful to talk to you, Lisa. Oh, it's a pleasure for me as well. It couldn't have been an, an, an easy life going, there, going to Australia as a young girl and then getting accepted in that country and then rising to the pinnacle of Australian sporting achievement. Well, for me, it was, it was pretty simple. Um, when we immigrated to Australia, I enjoyed being outdoors. Um, mm. And Australia is all about being outdoors in the sun, uh, in, at the beach. Uh, I played sport and sport is so ingrained in the Australian culture that I think it allowed me to fit in straight away. And thankfully, I was okay at a number of sports and it gave me opportunities to meet people, uh, start friendships um, and then obviously now I've been able to travel around the world. Very few people are, are open about their childhood and their upbringing as, as, as much as you've been. The fact that you were adopted as a young child and found a lovely home in, in Australia but you were very open about it. That's, that's not very common. No, it isn't common but I guess I learned from my parents. As long as I can remember, that I always knew that I was adopted. Uh, there was no secret, there was no Hollywood drama. At the age of 21, you find a secret document or you feel like something was missing. It was always told to me that I was adopted. And I didn't think that there was an issue with that. I thought it was pretty cool, pretty different. Um, so I had no issues sharing that story. And I was very fortunate and lucky enough to, to get the parents that I did. And they gave us so many opportunities. Um, they allowed me to play a lot of sport. Um, they, they supported me in every way, shape or form. And I think, you know, that's a story that should be shared. I understand now that I'm um, with the organisation Adopt Change that each individual who has been adopted, their story might be different. They're, obviously I was adopted at three weeks of age, so I don't have any childhood mm. memories of, of being three left. Three weeks? Yeah, three weeks. So. Well done, three weeks. Yeah. I mean, well done, not to you, but to your parents. You, you didn't have a choice at three weeks. But no. to adopt someone that young was incredible. Well, they were actually looking for a little boy and they had travelled around to, to Mumbai, went to a number of different orphanages, didn't have, find a connection. Then um, someone said, go to, to Pune, and, you know, there's a few more there. And I wasn't even actually in the, the orphanage or the orphanage was just to the side of the hospital. But the, the, one of the ladies uh, who worked there said, oh, there's this little girl that's just out on loan. Why don't you go have a look at her? Yeah. And they did, and my mother fell in love with me, and the rest is history. And she didn't say, you know, I've, I've seen that little girl in the in, in a little crib, and she keeps doing this all the time. And... <laughs> no, 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 yeah. no. Um, but I'm sure, uh, my, obviously, my father, being born and bred in, in Bombay, always wanted to take me outside and play cricket. And I showed a bit of interest to mm. do so. Um, so, yeah, I, I think maybe they did get their little boy in the end. Did an unusual surname sort of almost draw attention to you in Australia? Uh, maybe. Mm. A lot of people ask where it was from. And when yeah. I said it was Indian, they're like, oh, really? Yeah. I think they were expecting a Singh or a Sharma or a Yadav or whatever it might be. It's not the most common name in India. But I think also our family, when we immigrated, we didn't necessarily immerse ourselves into the Indian community. So we, we kind of tried to blend in straight away and get used to the you know, um, lifestyle in, in Australia. So I think that also helped. You used to come back to Mumbai for your, for your holidays? And we just discovered it's literally down the road from where I live. We could have, we could have been flatmates. Um, yeah, when I was younger... It's just that, I mean, it's a good thought, Lisa, <laughs> but I'm a little older than, than that, yeah. But uh, obviously my father's mother um, yeah. was still alive and uh, we spent a lot of time with my grandmother in, in Gumdevi in, in Mumbai and uh, we owned a school at the time uh, and uh, we lived on top of... Uh, the, the school. So I remember as a five, six, seven year old, I used to run havoc through the school whilst everyone was doing their classes, being the naughty kid and distracting everyone. But um, I have such fond memories of being in India when I was younger, um, playing carom, drinking gold spot, um, flying kites on the roof. Um, Here's another connect. In my last few months in advertising, I worked on the gold spot advertising Did you? campaign. Gold spot, the zinc thing. It's gone later, now. Yeah. I'm so so disappointed. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so really fond memories. And uh, it wasn't a. I think the first time I toured f with the Australian team was 2004, mm. and we played in in Mumbai. And there was there was a real sense of coming home. Like mm. I love 
landing and, and the heat just hits you, the spices, the smells, everything hits you. And there's a sense of a second home for me.